third up I have from this series is is we got to continue giving praise to Vladdy because we were so hard. Everybody was. Everybody's hard on Vladdy when he's bad, which is justifiable because the team is built around him. If if Vladdy's not good, the team's probably not going to be good. So a lot of a lot of criticism against Vladdy. So when he does start to hit and he starts to perform like he is right now, then we got to lean in and give a big thumbs up. So over the course of this series, he went nine for sixteen. He hit a dinger. He hit three doubles. Put up a 563 batting average and an on base or an on base plus slugging of 1.549. And his numbers for the season now have climbed all the way up to look really good. He's got a 302 batting average now and an 820 OPS. Like these are the numbers where if Vladdy can do that for the entire season, a 300 BA plus a mid mid 800s OPS. If he does that for the entirety of the year. Blue Jays are the offense should be in a, a decent spot. Like you need you need other guys getting in the mix as well. Of course, you need George Springer, Justin Turner. Bo's got to get going as well. But Lottie's the core of this team's offense, and it's not surprising that when he gets going like this, the team's now scoring some runs. Like I said, just three different games now, or four different games now in their last little stretch where they've scored over nine runs in a game unheard of for this team in April. So praise to Vladdy for heating up. He looks like the the star slugger that everybody expects him to be. I mean, he looks like a Lamborghini outside of a crack house right now. It, it's, it's, it, he looks like he doesn't fit inside of this, this lineup. It looks, it, it's it, exactly what you need from Vladimir Guerrero Jr. As you mentioned, and I'll be the first one to also admit that we have been critical of Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and I have been hard on Vladimir Guerrero Jr. because you need to get your stars like him and Bo going. Well, one of those guys have been going. Bo did have a pretty decent series in, uh, in I believe, against Chicago, but it ended there. Like, it, it, you need your top guys to go out there and be strong hitters. And while Bo did go uh, hit a 389 in this series, that's solid there, but. I mean, I don't know what else to say other than it's exactly what you need from him. It's now time for everybody else to start waking up. And I don't know, Cam, do you think this is just too little or too far down the road? Too little, too late. That was the, the I told you <laughs> I went to art school. Uh, too little, too late for, for the Blue Jays and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I know it's May 27th and there's still... 14 months of the baseball season to go, but uh, it just feels like too little too late and you're not going to be able to get back into uh, a run in a division that includes the the Yankees, the Red Sox, the, well, the Red Sox, I should probably say lightly, the Orioles as well. Saying the Red Sox was just second nature. The Orioles are coming back to me here, but I, it just seems like too little too late for, for me and Vlad. I, I love it. I, and I, I'm sitting here going, okay, now he can prove to me and at least a lot of, uh, most likely a lot of Blue Jays fans that when the going gets tough, he's able to pull himself and the team back into a a, 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 reasonable, a reasonable place and a place that we're all sitting here going, oh, okay, maybe, maybe it's not all that bad, but it is, it still is. So I, I, I I'm that's the leader that you want to be able to pull you back from the dead as Connor McDavid had said before, but there are other guys on this team who haven't been able to, who are supposed to. So I, I think it's just a too little too late and too little from everybody else other than Vladimir Guerrero jr. Yeah, it was on. It's uh, it's good to see him heating up. And I mean, it's unfortunate this wasn't here in April because it seems like the, it could have been a very different start for the Blue Jays if if Vladdy was hitting this way in April. But the positive thing is that he seems to have found a groove. I think maybe it coincides with the home run jacket. Maybe it doesn't. A little bit of vibes always help out. But yeah, like we both said, you need they need Vladdy to continue hitting like this throughout the course of the season. I mean, I don't expect him to hit. You know, like he did against Detroit, put up a 550 batting average for the rest of the season at 1500 OPS. But like these kinds of stretches need to go and be prolonged for Vladdy, and then they need to get Bo and Springer and Justin Turner. He already had a hot streak earlier in the year. Get another one, that'd be great. They need some stretches like this because it, it's it's going to get late pretty fast. They have this er, this easy stretch here 
where they play the White Sox three more times and it's back home. They play the Pirates and then they host Baltimore for a four game set and then it's in Oakland. But after that one in Oakland, the, the schedule starts to get pretty hard again in, 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 in June here. They're in Milwaukee. That's a good team. They're hosting Cleveland. That's a good team. They're hosting Boston. They're a fine team. They go to Cleveland again. They go to Boston again. Then it's the Yankees. Then it's the Astros who have heated up. Then it's Seattle. Then it's San Francisco. Then it's Arizona. Then it's Detroit again. It's just nonstop teams who they're not easy wins um, necessarily. And that's sort of the that's sort of the thing is when when you're the fan of a team and you look ahead at the schedule and almost every single team they go up against, you're like, it's not an easy win. Then you start to realize that you're the easy win and everybody else is viewing you as, OK, we're playing the Blue Jays. We should win. And I think that's kind of perhaps where we're getting to. I think there's probably only three teams in the American League East where you can say the Blue Jays are discernibly better than these teams. They're better than Oakland. They're better than the Angels. They're better than the White Sox. But are they better than Houston? Are they better than Texas? Are they better than Detroit? Are they better than Tampa? Are they better than Boston? Are they better than Seattle? They're going to have to jump over like all of those teams to make a playoffs. So, I mean, I, 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 I understand why people don't want to give up in May. That's fair, but I also understand why people would give up in May right now. Yeah, and you're entering this series. I mean, we talked about so much uh, heading into this series and the Chicago series of the teams that run differentials. And heading into this series, I believe I had mentioned this uh, on the last episode, but heading into this series, this was a team that over the past week had allowed their run differential to drop by 12 runs. Heading into the game on Thursday, they were down eight runs in their run differential. And as I was taking a look at it while you were chatting there, they went from a minus eight run differential heading into that series to an even zero. An even zero for a team that had been nothing but floundering when it came to producing runs and allowing runs, you allowed them to outscore you by eight runs in the series. That is a joke. Thanks for tuning in to Blue Jays Nation Radio. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from to never miss an episode.